By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Arnhem at the Camel Trophy. We have reached the finals of this gentleman's Magic the Gathering old school tournament. And what does gentleman's rules mean again? It means we are not playing with Library of Alexandria or with Mind Twists in our deck. So those cards, you're not going to find them here in Arnhem. Now, we have reached the finals. We started with 32 very skilled magicians, including myself. Um, and uh, I ended up 13th, by the way, if you're interested with my Goblin deck. And uh, in the finals here, we're going to look at Bjorn and Kuhn battling it out. And Bjorn is playing a deck called Burning Bots, also known as BB-8. It's a very, very good deck. It's red, it's blue, it's super aggressive. And he is taking on Kuhn, and Kuhn is playing on Juzam Dream. So he's playing with Juzam Jin. he's playing with Underworld Dreams, but he's also playing with a lot of white. So it's black and white, so there are a lot of... Uh, control cards in there like Disenchant and Swords that can kind of take care of the board. And of course, he splashed in Blue Power to make it even better. Now, before I start with the deck deck section of this video, I would just like to point out that as always, this video also has timestamps. You can find them in the description below. So I know that some of you enjoy going to the match first. Check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to, to do this is by checking out the description below. And there you will find a timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the game part of this video. As for now, I'm going to start with the deck decks and I'll start with the deck of Bjorn Burning Bots. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Bjorn, so Burning Bots, also known as BB-8. And uh, I mean, the title is a fitting one, Burning Bots, because we see a lot of robots in the form of Triskelions, Suchis, Mistress Factories. And then of course you're going to play with the copy artifacts because a copy artifact one blue and one, an enchantment uh, allows you to copy any artifact in place. So you can copy your trike, for example, and you have two four fours with those counters that you can take off to shoot at your opponent. So that's that's just super painful, right? And then we see the burning side of the deck. We see three psionic blasts. We see four lightning bolts. We see a fireball. So, I mean, this deck is a business deck. It doesn't want to do anything funny or cute or silly or build a board state. No, 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 no. It just wants to kill the opponent as fast as possible. I mean, these decks are very difficult to play against. We also see a lot of mana accelerators in the deck, which makes sense with a Suchi and a Trike. You just want to play them out ASAP. So we've got all the mocks in. We've got two mana vaults. We got one Felwer Stone in there. We've got a Black Lotus in there. So there are just a lot of ways to quickly play out those bigger robot creatures. I mean, if you have a Trike turn one and a copy, that could be super good, you know, That's that's it's not a game win yet, but you're kind of halfway there, aren't you? Now, there is, of course, a risk when you're playing with this many mana accelerators, and that is that you run out of cards in your hand. And that's why the draw seven cards are quite important here. We've got Wheel of Fortune, we've got Time Twister, we've got Brain Geyser as a draw. And uh, the good thing here as well is that we have a Demonic Tutor. So with the Demonic Tutor, uh, we can, of course, look all these restricted cards up, and it kind of doubles your chances of finding that one restricted card that you need. And that is one of the reasons why I think Demonic Tutor is, is, is so good. You know, at the right moment in the game, a time walk can give you the, the, the victory. That means you've got two chances to draw it off the top of your deck, your Demonic Tutor or the time walk itself. Same thing goes, of course, with all these draw sevens. There's also the Ancestral Recall in here, obviously. So, I mean, this is just looking like a super strong deck. And it's going to be really tough to win against this, but if there's one deck at the tournament that can, I think the Juzam deck is the one. Let's take a look at the opponent of Bjorn uh, Kuhn and his deck, Juzam Dreams. And here we see the deck of Kuhn, Juzam Dreams. And I've called it Juzam Dreams because he's playing with four Juzam Jin and he's playing with three Underworld Dreams. Now this deck, just like the Bur uh, Burning Bots deck, is aggressive, right? But in a different way. Like he also wants to play quickly. He's got dark rituals to accelerate. He's got sinkholes to kind of take care of the lands to slow down his opponent. And of course, the disenchants to target all the mana rocks that Bjorn has in his deck. And then hopefully he can kind of get ahead on speed and he can play out his Juzam Jin or Hypnotic Spectre quite early. Now, the difficulty, of course, in this specific matchup is that his opponent is playing with a lot of direct damage. So the psionic blasts can hit the Sengir vampires and the hippies. The bolts can hit the hippies. So, I mean, Juzam is looking quite good as a 5-5 five -five, because that's going to be harder for Bjorn to, to, to get rid of, basically, right? And also, he can block it on the Suchi, but then it's not going to kill the Juzam and he is going to lose his Suchi. So, I think Juzam is good in this matchup. 
However, you know, what I do worry about is the Abyss on the side of Bjorn. I just realized I didn't mention it in his deck deck, but the Abyss is going to be really strong in this match because it's going to force, you know, Kung to sack during his upkeep, sack a non-artifact creature. And he's got a lot of non-artifact creatures. And of course, Bjorn only has artifact creatures. So the Abyss is really a one-way street uh, against Kun in the matchup. So that's going to be tough. Of course, we do see the Suchis in Kun's sideboard. So I'm predicting that after game one, he's going to board in those Suchis because they're kind of Abyss proof. But th that is something that worries me a little bit. Um, of course, it is, it is still... A good deck he's got a good chance there is a card that for me really stands out in this matchup uh, for kun and that's underworld dreams underworld dreams of course three black to cast for this enchantment from legends that says every time your opponent draws a card he or she takes a damage now this is really important because remember burning bots is a good deck but sometimes it can run out of steam and that's why those draw sevens are in there wheel of fortune uh, you know a, a time twister but also a brain geyser also ancestral recall all those cards get really, really weak because of Underworld Dreams. Can you imagine having two Underworld Dreams in play? If you then play an Ancestral Recall on yourself, you take six points of damage. I mean, that's tough. It's still worth, I guess, drawing three cards, but if you're already under pressure, that's going to be really difficult for Bjorn, you know, to deal with. Um, also, what's nice is that Underworld Dreams only works one way, so it doesn't count for Kun. So Kun can play out his Time Twister, for example, let's you know draw seven new cards but then if he has an underworld dreams in play it means seven points of damage for Bjorn if he's got two underworld dreams 14 points of damage so I think the dreams could be really good just as I think the underworld uh, just as I think the um, the abyss could be really good for Bjorn you know I think those could be two key cards in this matchup uh, on the other hand of course Kuhn does have four disenchants so he does have an answer to the abyss and that's going to be tougher now that I'm talking about this enchant that's going to be tougher for Bjorn because Bjorn doesn't have a lot of answers against the underworld dreams so I think if you're Kuhn you really want to get that dreams out early in the game you know then it's going to do a lot of work and, and you can you know turn one ritual into underworld dreams it's actually a pretty good play against a player like Bjorn anyway um, we've looked at the deck of Kuhn we've discussed the deck of Bjorn that means we're ready let's go to the finals of the camel trophy Game number one, here we go. On the right, we have Kun, and he is on the play. So he's playing with his deck, Juzam Dreams. It's black and white with, of course, the blue power splash in there. Look at that opener for Kun. This is what I think he wants to do, you know, starting off Ritual into Underworld Dreams. Immediate pressure on uh, Bjorn. And also remember, Bjorn is playing Burning Bot, so he's got a lot of draw seven effects, like Wheel of Fortune, Time Twister. He's got a lot of, like, Brain Geyser, Ancestral Recall. All those cards are just not as good anymore with that Underworld Dreams in there. And he doesn't play with any enchantment removal. So that Underworld Dreams could be quite good. We see an opener here with Mox Jet and Mishra's Factory. There is a Mana Vault and a Pass, meaning next turn potentially he could play out a Trike. Which then again is a problem for Kun. Kun of course having some Divine Offerings in his sideboard that he can board in after the first game. And he plays with four Disenchants main. Let's see what he's going to do. There's an underground C, so the dual land for blue and black and a pass. So next turn, potentially, he could play out an Hypnotic Spectre. There's a land, a Badlands, on the side of Bjorn. Is he going to play out a Triskelion here? Does have enough mana to do so. Playing out a Mox Emerald. Three cards in hand, it seems. And he's just going to animate and attack. I think this is good news for Kuhn. There's no big bot coming. Or is there? Tapping two. What are we going to see? There's, oh, a city in a bottle. He's playing one city in a bottle main. And this is very unfortunate for Kuhn because he's playing with four Juzam Jins. He's probably going to board them out after the first game. But this is very unfortunate for him. Of course, if he can find a white source... He could take care of it. First, he's going to tap two. There's a Demonic Tutor. What is he going to tutor up? That's the big question. I guess an Ancestral Recall to draw three. And some players have asked me in the comments below, why do players always Demonic for an Ancestral Recall? Well, that's quite simple. Remember, the Ancestral, uh, the Demonic Tutor effect gets replaced by the Ancestral Recall. So that's card for card. And then you play the Ancestral Recall. So you've, you still get a hat plus two cards. And if you're looking for, for example, maybe Kuhn right now is looking for a white source, then you don't really want to 
pick that up with the demonic tutor and you've got a pretty big chance of hitting that white source with an ancestral recall and if you don't find that white source then you've got a bigger chance of finding it the next turn because there are four more car cards out of your deck there we see exactly there we see the ancestral recall so he's going to draw three let's see what he can do with all the mana nothing he's just going to pass for all the cards i mean he's just going to pass turn here we see bjorn dropping to 17. and he's going to animate and attack for two putting kuhn here on 16 and a pass and remember there's that city in a the bottle there on the battlefield so he cannot play out his juzam jins no white source yet he needs like a disenchant or a swords to take care of some of the permanents on the side of Bjorn. He's tapping three. Are we going to see Hypnotic Spectre? There's an Hypnotic Spectre. Now the question is, does Bjorn have a Lightning Bolt? And there we go. Strip on the factory. There's a Bolt on Hypnotic Spectre. And again, damage for Bjorn. So he's already taken four damage from that one Underworld Dreams, but obviously Ku needs more than just that one Dreams. There's a strip mine. Interesting. Bjorn could have considered stripping maybe one of the lands to slow Kuhn down even further, but maybe he's waiting for, for example, a white source. There's another swamp. Let's see what Kuhn can do. I wish we could see that hand. I really wonder how many white sources are in there. It must be quite frustrating. I mean, almost half his deck is white. Going to go through his hand again. Usually his deck is more aggressive. But I think that City in a Bottle is doing a lot of work here for Bjorn. He's going to tap three again. Another Spectre, perhaps. Oh, a Time Twister. This is nice. This is what I talked about in the deck deck section. Oh, and look at that. Bjorn losing that Ancestral Recall. Couldn't play it out because he doesn't have any blue sources. And remember, because of the Underworld Dreams, Bjorn is taking seven more points of damage. He's already on nine. And that's all inflicted by that one Underworld Dreams. Don't underestimate the Underworld Dreams. It's really a crazy good card. And uh, always when I play with Timmy's Spellbook, my mono blue deck, uh, whenever my opponent plays that card, I, I just remember it in my brain and keep a counter spell for that card because it's so good. And there we saw a strip, by the way, in response from Bjorn. So that means that Kuhn also has to shuffle up that uh, underground C in his deck. And Bjorn has to shuffle up his uh, strip mine. That makes sense. So both players shuffling up. But I mean, it does mean seven fresh cards for Bjorn. And I mean, he wasn't all that happy with his hand. So seven new cards and he can start the turn. He's got a lot of mana available. And Kuhn, of course, didn't have his land drop yet, I think. Or maybe he did. Now, I'm not quite sure anymore. We'll just have to wait and see if he plays a land. He had his land drop. He's also playing with some Moxen in the deck. Let's see what he can do. If he's just going to pass, it's going to be tough. He's in the tank here. Yep, just kind of passed. This is great news for Bjorn. I mean, yes, he's on eight. But now, I mean, now the party can start for him. He's got six mana available. Probably has a land drop too. We can kind of see that hand there. We see Soul Ring. I see a, um, a Chaos Orb, which could be interesting. Maybe Orb on the uh, Underworld Dreams. And I also see, I believe, a copy artifact in the deck. So if he has a copy artifact, he's probably going to copy the Chaos Orb here. Let's see what he's going to do. Yeah, there he goes for the blue mana. Yeah, he's going to copy the Chaos Orb here. That makes absolute sense. Probably going to target the Underworld Dreams. Exactly, because Underworld Dreams is so risky. And there we go. This is a very important flip here for Bjorn in the finals of the Camel Trophy. Is he going to hit it? Yes, he is. Very good flip there. Full on the Dreams. Dreams is gone. And there's a pass. And now Kuhn, of course, having a full grip of cards. 
Does he have another Underworld Dreams? That's the question. Is he then going to play it out as well, kind of tempting Bjorn to to, lose, uh, to use his Chaos Orb on the new Underworld Dreams? But this is an exciting finals. 16 life for Kuhn, who's on the play right now, and 8 life for Bjorn. But Bjorn has, of course, that board state with Sydney in a bottle. He's got Chaos Orb. And just a lonely Mistress Factory being uh, played out here by Kuhn. I'm a little bit surprised. Still no white sources. Maybe he's waiting for the white source, though. Going through his hand again. What can he do with four mana? Nothing, I guess. He's going to pass the turn. He's going to draw a card. No damage this time because the Underworld Dreams is gone. This is really good news for Bjorn that uh, Kuhn wasn't able to do anything else. There we see a tap of four. There's a Suchi hitting the board. And there's a pass. If Kuhn can now find a white source and, for example, a disenchant on the Suchi, he can attack for two with the factory. I wonder if, when he does that, if Bjorn will then activate his Chaos Orb. There we see a Scrubland, so he's got white mana online. Now what is he going to do? He also has five lands now, so he could even play a Sengir Vampire, which is looking quite good right now, because it flies. It flies over to Suchi. Remember, Bjorn is on eight. He's gonna tap for a white. There's a Swords on the Suchi, so he's gonna go back up to 12. There's an Animate, and then in fact, he's gonna attack here. I wonder if Bjorn's gonna use... No, he's got a Bolt. That is a perfect answer for Bjorn, that Bolt. I wanted to say I wonder if he's going to use his Chaos Orb since, uh, you know, Kuhn doesn't have access to any white mana so he cannot respond with a Disenchant. But obviously when you have the Bolt in hand, the Bolt is the better option. Tapping 6 here for a Trike, I assume. Yeah, there's the Triskelion. And we can see that Kuhn is really losing control here. And Bjorn is really kind of taking over this game. He's on 12 now. He's got a 4-4 creature. He's got the Chaos Orb. He's got the city in a bottle blocking those Juzams. There's another factory. I mean, Sengir is still looking like a good card here. Of course, he only plays two, though, in his deck. And Kuhn really stuck, tapping his fingers, thinking about his options. This is, of course, the final. Are we going to see a sinkhole here? No, we're going to see a Chaos Orb as well. Interesting. Because now you've got this Chaos Orb standoff, right? Where Kuhn, he can say, I'm going to activate my Chaos Orb. Do you want to respond? And then Duren can say, I'm going to activate my Chaos Orb in response. And he can then flip on the Orb of Kuhn. I think... I mean, one of the things Kuhn can do is activate his Chaos Orb, kind of lure out an activation by Bjorn and then disenchant the Chaos Orb. Now remember, uh, Bjorn, of course, is playing with Shatters in his deck, so he can also respond with a Shatter on the Chaos Orb of Kuhn upon activation. Three cards in hand by Bjorn, by the way. There's the attack for four. He's just going to take it, going to drop to 12. And Bjorn... Looking at his mana base, tapping the Mox Emerald. Does he have another copy artifact, perhaps? Since he's tapping a blue as well. Remember, he's playing four copy artifacts main. Only played out one so far. Copy artifact would be quite good on this board. It looks like he's changing his mind, though. Untapping the land and the Mox again. Passing to turn. No end step Chaos Orb activation. I kind of expected that from Kuhn. Because I, th I think if you're Kuhn, you, you just want to get rid of that Chaos Orb as well. But maybe I'm reading it wrong, of course. Anyway, he's animating the factory now. That's interesting because Bjorn can, of course, kill it with the tri counters. He can kill it with the orb. Maybe he's got direct damage in hand. There we see a tap. There's a Psionic Blast. That means two points of damage here for Bjorn. I mean, in this matchup, the factories are so vulnerable. Actually, for both players, because, you know, Kuhn is playing. Here we see the Hypnotic Spectre by Kuhn, by the way. Kuhn is playing 
um, you know, Disenchant Swords. Uh, Bjorn is playing Psyblast and Lightning Bolt and Shatter. So it's a big risk when you animate those factories. I think maybe part of the decision making of Kuhn was to think, you know what, if you've got a Bolt or a Psyblast, you play it on the factory. And that means that then after I play my Hippie, my Hippie's kind of safe. Taking the damage here, going to drop to 8. So Kuhn now on 8 and Bjorn on 10. Going to tap 2. What is he going to do? There's a copy artifact. Probably going to copy the trike. I guess. Copying the trike. <laughs> and this is a nice moment for Bjorn to do it because Kuhn is tapped out. So he cannot do any shenanigans. Also activating the Chaos Orb. Yeah, this makes perfect sense for Bjorn. He, he waited until the right moment. Waited for Kuhn to tap out. Then he doesn't have to worry about the disenchant anymore. And now he's going to do play a copy and going to kill the Chaos Orb of Kuhn. There we see the flip. Is he going to make it? Taking his time, yep, ooh, it kind of bounced off, but not enough. And Kuhn just needed a little bit of luck. If Bjorn would have missed, it still would have been a tough match, but Kuhn would have had a chance, I think. Also being on eight with double trike against you, I think it's kind of game over here in game one for Kuhn. Yeah, that's it, it's picking up the cards. That is unfortunate because there was that moment in the game, remember the time twister with the underworld dreams, and Bjorn got really low, and then if Kuhn would have found probably a better 7 and Bjorn a worse 7, he could have gotten this game won. So it was a closer game than you, than you might think after watching, I guess, the second half after the time twister. Anyway, both players are going to dive into their sideboards, and then we'll catch back up with them in game number 2. Game number two, here we go. So the first game won by the Burning Bots player and it looks like he's taking a mulligan. So he's gonna go down to six there, I believe. Yep, six for Bjorn. And Kuna, of course, on the play after losing that first game. So he's gotta win this to win the title here at the Camel Trophy, the finals. Starting off with a Scrubland and a Black Lotus. Does he have a Juzam? Perhaps he boarded them out though. Anyway, Dark Ritual. This is spectacular into a demonic tutor. What is he going to do here? So he's got one black floating still. He's going to sack the lotus. Wonder what he's going to do. Maybe you draw seven, but then again, then you're giving your opponent seven new cards as well. He just mulled down to six. But of course, if you give him a new seven, he cannot choose to take a mulligan. So you just have to deal with those seven. Quite interesting. Yeah, here we go. Wow. Interesting opener here. Gonna shuffle everything back. He's got one black floating. There he goes. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about this play. Of course, we cannot see the rest of the hand of Kuhn. It is interesting. What I what I like about it is that uh, you know Bjorn now draws seven and doesn't have that option to take a mulligan. Um, what I don't like about it is that you know you are losing, of course, your Black Lotus and your Demonic Tutor in the process. I do understand you get to draw, of course, the cards back again. Um, you know, and of course Bjorn already took a mulligan. It would have been easier if Bjorn hadn't taken a mulligan. But let's see, let's see what he can do. He still has one black floating. Remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish. Okay, there's the pass, so he's not using that. So that's uh, that's nice of a rock and roll start here at uh, game number two. There is a Mishra's factory. Tapping the factory. There's a soul ring. Fuck this. Gonna tap the soul ring. What else are we gonna get? There is a chaos orb. And a pass turn. I think if you're Kuhn and you've got a disenchant, play the land, play the disenchant. There's a city of brass taking a damage. And are we going to see that disenchant here? Going to drop to 19. A time walk. Okay, that works as well. It's going to untap, draw a card for turn. I wonder how much artifact hate he boarded in. I know he's got divine offerings in the sideboard as well, so those are things he could board in extra. 
Gewoon er even iemand op zijn bek komen slaan hier. We'll just have to wait and see if he boarded in his, his sushis and took out his juzams. Goed gepakt. Goed gepakt, wat uh, had er anders uitgezien? Ik ga weer een keer denk. Goed gepakt was ze van ik spel in There is a swamp. Ja, dat vind jij mag. Dat, dat, was, dat, dat was goed gepakt. Gonna tap two. Are we now gonna see that disenchant? Oh, there's a Chaos Orb, and he's going to activate the Chaos Orb, so he's going to flip on the Chaos Orb. Oh, it's a miss! It's a miss! Oh, that is painful! Kun, 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 kun! Why do you do this? Why? Oh, sorry guys, but I, I always want to have, like, exciting finals. Now he's missing this flip, that could be quite decisive already. That is just, oh, so annoying. Anyway, we see a Suchi here. And remember, Kuhn is down one game, you know, he has to win this to make it 1-1 so that we can go into game number three. I mean, it's far from over, don't get me wrong, but I just wished he would have, uh, would have, hit, would have hit it with the flip. Okay, there's an Ancestral Recall, so this helps. I mean, blue power helps after making a mistake. Time walk, Ancestral Recall, Time Twister. <laughs> He's finding all of it here in game number two. Is it going to be enough, though? That's the question. There's a Mishra's factory. So three open mana sources there for Kuhn. The Swamp, the Scrubland, and the Mishra's factory. <laughs> going to tap the factory here. Tap the Scrubland, I guess. And now what is he going to do? There's a Divine Offering. And that's a great card because it, it takes care of the artifact and it gives you life. It's just fantastic. So he's going to go back up to 21. He's going to play a Dark Ritual into an Underworld Dreams. Again, kind of inviting Bjorn here to use the Chaos Orb on the Dreams. Taking a card, so dropping to 19. There seems to be a mana problem for Bjorn, by the way. He doesn't find any colored lands. He does find a trike, though. It's going to go up to a 4-4. And Kuhn drawing a card for turn. Does he have an answer to this Triskelion? Again, trike, one of those creatures that is just so good in old school. It's amazing. I remember back in the day when I was a little Tim, I didn't like the creature much, much because it was six to cast for a 4-4 four, four that couldn't fly. I remember saying that to someone. And boy, was I wrong. It's such a super good creature. There is a strip mine on the factory. Tapping for four. There's a Juzam Jin, so he didn't board out the Juzams. I'm liking this. Didn't board them out, despite seeing that city in a bottle in game one. And now I wonder what Bjorn is going to do. So he's going to take a damage from the Mana Vault, of course, and from the Underworld Dream. So dropping to 17. Cannot find any colored lands, it seems. Passing the turn. So here Kuhn taking a damage from his own Jews. I'm dropping to 20. And things are looking up here for Kuhn. After that missed flip, I was really concerned, but he's gotten back in the game. There's the attack for five. There's the activation of the Chaos Orb in response. Is Bjorn gonna hit it? He really needs to. A lot of pressure on this flip in the finals of the Camel Trophy, game number two. Here we go. Yep, it's a hit. I have to say, Bjorn, you know how to flip your orbs. I mean, all your flips have been super solid so far. And maybe a funny side note story is that at the Camel Trophy, I think maybe it was the first Camel Trophy, Bjorn, I missed so many flips with my Chaos Orb that, that you awarded me a prize at the end of the tournament. You gave me a Wood Elemental and I still have it in my binder. I love that card. 
Anyway, we see a Sengir vampire here being cast. Oh, look at that. Copy artifacts and ancestral recall. If he can just find one blue source, he's got the game. But he's not finding it yet. And it looks like Bjorn is a little bit frustrated, I can imagine. But I mean, he's not dead yet. And if he can find a blue source, there's the attack by the Sengir. So Bjorn's going to drop here to 11. And of course the Ancestral Recall is a bit of a problem because it does mean 3 damage for Bjorn. You know, then again, 3 damage for 3 cards, that's a super deal of course, but well, if you're too low, you're too low. Anyway, he's going to drop to 9. Remember, he takes a damage from the Vault and a damage from the Underworld Dreams. What he really needs... Hey, there we've got a blue source. Can he get back into this? Remember the hand that he showed. He's got three copy artifacts. I mean, that is huge, right? Is he going to draw three cards first? No, he's going to bolt first. So he's going to bolt the Sengir and then kill it with one counter. So I guess it's dead, right? Or does Kuhn want to do something? Look at that, he wants to do... Oh, he's going to play Swords to Plowshares on his own Sengir to gain some life. So he's going to go up. Then he's going to take some damage. I think he's really focused here in his decision-making on the fact that he's got that uh, Underworld Dreams on the board. But it's going to be tough for Kuhn because next turn, remember, he can play his, uh, his copy artifacts. Bjorn, that is. He's going to tap four here. Going to take another damage. Does he have a Juzam? Another Underworld Dreams. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. Okay. Kuhn on 17, Bjorn on nine. And he's going to play a balance. That balance is brilliant because it means that Bjorn no longer has a target for the copy. He's showing his hand now. Oh, this is this is so good. This is so good. Wow. What a play here by Kuhn. He's like, I'm going to sack all my lands. I don't care. And now that, that swords on the, on the vampire makes absolute sense. Beautiful magic here on the side of Kuhn. And here we see Bjorn dropping to six. And now, of course, Bjorn is finding the blue mana sources. That's how it always goes, isn't it? At least he can untap his Volt. He is going to drop to four. He's got two more turns, which is something. Even more colored mana. There's a pass. He's going to drop to two. And again, another slam on the table. And that's it. Game number two, winning it here for Kuhn. And I'm happy, not because I'm a fan of Kuhn, but because I'm looking forward to game number three. I always love these close finals. And man, oh man, if we go back to that moment where, you know, Kuhn missed that flip with the Chaos Orb. Remember that moment? I was so frustrated about that because I was like, Kuhn, 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 what are you doing? But he managed to get back into it with the Ancestral Recall. And of course, he had the luck that Bjorn couldn't find a blue source. If he could have found a blue source earlier in the game, it would have been completely different. But hey, that's magic for you. Both of these players are going to uh, shuffle up, maybe make some last minute changes in their sideboards. And we're going to catch back up with them in game number three. Game number three, the decider here in the finals of the Camel Trophy. Whoever's going to win this game wins the entire tournament. Here we see the opener by Bjorn Moxjet and a Mishra's Factory. So probably some early pressure. Let's see what Kuhn can do. He won that second game, so it's a 1-1. The big question now is who's going to win game number three and be the winner of the Camel Trophy? Kuhn is taking his time, so I guess he's got a lot of options. Scrubland go, though. I wonder if he's got a Swords in hand. That's, of course, a question here for Bjorn as well. Do you really want to animate the factory and attack, taking a risk of, of it being killed? There's another factory. He's taking the risk. So he's going for that aggro game plan. Going to pump it up. Going to see Kuhn drop here to 17. But 
Let's see, can Kuhn do something against all the factories? He can play his own factory, of course. And pass the turn. And again, uh, I wonder if Bjorn's kind of low on that colored mana. He really needs a blue and a red source. Well, there's your red source for you in the form of a Badlands. He's going to animate again and attack. Are we going to see a disenchant? It looks like it. There's a disenchant. And there's a pass. Okay, so the untap here by Kuhn. And that's, of course, the danger again when you're attacking with your factories early in the game. When you then lose a land, it has... A much bigger impact. There we see a strip mine on the factory. Attacking here. There's a bolt though. I let me know in the comments below. I would be tempted to strip the Batlands instead. Kind of to cut off the, the black mana. Uh, sorry, the red mana. But of course it also makes sense to take care of that uh of that factory. So Kuhn just playing a land, passing a turn. There we see a volcanic island here. So Bjorn now way better in his mana than in, uh, in game number two. He can find those uh, dual lands that he needs to cast his colored spells. Passing the turn back to Kuhn. Kuhn playing a swamp here. Four lands. Is he going to play a Juzam Jin? Juzam Jin hitting the board, ladies and gentlemen. A 5-5 five, five powerhouse. Every time I see people casting that card, especially Kuhn, you know, it's getting higher and higher up on my wish list. But there we see the Abyss. And this is what I talked about in the deck deck. The Abyss being so good against Kuhn's deck. This is a huge problem for him. So he was ahead of the game, but now he's not. He's going to drop to 19. Well, 16 even, it seems. Already took some damage, of course, from the factories. That's true. He was on 17 after hit by the factory, took a damage now from his own Juzum, dropped to 16, and ended to sack it to the abyss. There's a Suchi hitting the board. There's a factory. I mean, that abyss is a problem. Kuhn has answers in his deck, but can he find it in time? That's the big question. Copy artifact on the Suchi. Even more pressure on the board. Attack for four is going to drop to 12. It's looking bad. What can he do? Abyss is so, so strong here. Okay, there's a divine offering. He's going to go for the copy artifact. And they're attacking here for two. So he's going to gain some lives. He's going to go up to 16 at least. Yeah. Going to deal two damage to Bjorn. But I mean, that's no problem for Bjorn. He was still on 20, so he drops to 18. There's a psionic blast on the life total here of Kuhn. Because remember, there's also a lot of burn in the burning bots deck, obviously. There's another copy. Copy artifact is so good. Ooh, there's a blood moon. That is a really good card from the sideboard. Look at that. Kuhn is dropping to eight. It's looking really bad for him. Need something now. A balance would be glorious. Can there be a balance? Remember, he doesn't have that factory anymore to chump because of the Blood Moon. He's just got a bunch of mountains, a swamp, and some moxen. At least he's got a mox pearl. So if he has a disenchant, disenchant can also save him here. But then he has to kill one of the two... Suchi's, of course. He's on eight. He's really in the tank here. Can he find a way out? He has two black sources, though. If he has a Juzam, he should play it out, because then at least he's got a blocker. And, of course, he's got a sack at the next turn to the Abyss, but, hey, it's going to keep the opponent at bay at least for one more turn. It's going to tap four. There's the Juzam, and there's another Juzam in his hand. Oh, that Abyss is doing so much work for Bjorn here in game number three. And of, of course, Bjorn doesn't have to sack any creatures because they're all artifact creatures. They don't care about the Abyss. Or the Abyss doesn't care about them. There's a Shatter. Probably on the Mox Pearl. Yeah, this, this makes sense, this play. This is a good play. 
Passing the turn, he's gonna drop to seven. And he's gonna lose his Juzam to the Abyss. He's got another Juzam to play out. But it's looking super bad here for Kun. Another factory that's just a mountain because of the Blood Moon. And now Kun doesn't even have to Pearl anymore for that, you know, for that top deck balance. Oh man, oh man. Is this a sure thing here for Bjorn? Is he gonna win the Camel Trophy here? Game number three. He's thinking about attacking with both, putting him on three, I guess then, but losing his Suchi in the process. He is doing it, he's attacking. Going full force. Okay. Nope. Nope. I mean, Kuhn has no choice. He just got a block, but then he'll drop to three. Does that mean that Bjorn uh, has a bolt there? He's kind of signaling a bolt here. Anyway, blocking one of them, taking four, dropping to three. A trike? Are we going to see a trike? There's the trike, and there is the win by Bjorn. Congratulations, you are the winner of the Camel Trophy 2023, winning with a trike. I mean, that's fitting when your deck is called Burning Bots, Burning Coon down here. I really think the Abyss was the big, you know, VIP, or how do you say it, MVP, most valuable player, most valuable card, MVC of game number three, just like Underworld Dreams was the MVC of game number two really nice to see those enchantments being so so decisive again congratulations to bjorn for winning this tournament and of course also to kun and a special th thanks from my side here as a content creator i want to thank all the players at the tournament at the camel trophy that were willing to show their skills on the channel thank you so much because without you i couldn't make these videos so thank you all of you for helping out and again a big congratulations to bjorn for winning the camel trophy 2023 and this is the winning deck wow what a tournament it was i hope you enjoyed the video series of the event if you did please leave a like comment or share this on your socials all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and talking about that you can also subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet so please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell Okay, now that that is all out of the way, there's one thing I'd like to talk to you about, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because you can support the channel financially as well and help me as a content creator uh, by becoming a patron via patreon.com slash timmytalks. That already starts with just $1 a month, and for that, you get some really nice perks. For example, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join all the Timmy Talks online events. And last, but definitely not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This one. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Her light in the morning. Way day and up she rises. Way day and up she rises. Way day and up she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober.